I wasn't part of this. So I'll just say happy birthday to Pat and continue to learn. And I've learned a lot. Therefore, thank you very much. My only little contribution, which will be less than two minutes, is that I agree with Senior Alfred. There must be a deliberate government physical and monetary policy to drive what we're talking about today. And I will stand by dismantling corruption. Corruption kills three things that makes a society. It kills entrepreneurship. Nobody thinks in a corrupt country. There's no entrepreneur in a corrupt country. Any country where people in government are richer than businessmen, manufacturers, it will not survive. Mm. <laughs> government people all over the world I have lived and established a small business in the UK. Every year, I get a letter from the Queen and the Prime Minister because my business is turning over five million pounds. In my place, in all my business in Nigeria, I've been cutting a letter from a local government chairman. <laughs> it doesn't care. When I was a governor, I'm happy because Karen is here. As a governor, I insist if you must build a factory, I must come and visit you. You should not come to see the governor. And anybody who builds a factory, I must give you money to build your road. A nothing build factory, I laid foundation for that factory. I gave you money to build the road. And I said, what you're going to manufacture, I'll be your first customer. And I told him, I ordered 1,000 vehicles for me. Paid him up front for one, more than one year. Even when I told people that they are going to build schools for buses for schools, cars for traditional rulers, cars for this, security, but they told me, how can I order something they don't see? break is going to fail, this is going to happen, people are going to die. I say, well, those who remain after those who die will continue. But that this is the man. That's why that place is standing. She cast him build a factory. I gave him money to do. I can tell you ironically, three critics, same thing. Whenever I want to do their road, our people will estimate five times the price they will give me. Because I go to them and say, how much will it cost you for this? Like Kutis, one of our people is made 200 and something thousand million for his road. He gave us only about 40 something million. And people say, oh, he's not an engineer. I said, the man who needs the road gave us 40. We, we don't need the road. You are taking this 200 and something thousand. Why don't we give him 40 thousand? If he wants for that road is still standing. The one we are doing for 200 and something have all failed. So, government, we must dismantle criminality. It kills professionalism. Nobody is a professional. You saw my text last, uh, my tweet last week. I was in Soka to campaign. Somebody who made a first class, who left university a year after me, who made a first class, became a professor, was happy to be a professor. His salary in 2010 is the equivalent of $2,700. His same salary today cannot buy $250. He bought a car after lecturing for one year, but he cannot even buy a tire today. And he was asking me if, I, if he can become a say to a member of House of Rep that I came to campaign for. And I said, how? Ah, he said, he's paid 400000 the essay to the man is paid 12 million. He can, no country can survive with that. There's no entrepreneurship. There's no scale with that. You can't. Corruption kills hard work. So we must dismantle the corruption and get people for their talent, their skill, their energy to earn what people's talent and hard work must give them the opportunity. And I believe that what we're listening here will work. But we also need to get government involved. 
What we are saying here now, there's no government person involved. They don't listen. They don't go for lecture. I've been in that space, so I can tell you. Nobody in government goes to where they lecture. <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> Again, they go to where they part. Simple. Oh my gosh. And no country works like that. They should be listening to the skills. They should be respecting the Koskaris, the friends, the everything. The keynote speakers from the states, you know what it means. People come to visit you. Government people, governors invite you. Here, yeah, no, you, you look, you go and make for governor, kill up, stay in there, waiting room for us. Hi guys, um, today is my birthday, celebrating 67 years. I've never had a birthday as good as this. First, this is my good friend. It's also his birthday. Everybody knows him. Dr. Pat Otomi, he's celebrating 68, I'm celebrating 67. One year young, older than me. And I've met your excellency, obviously, Dr. Peter Omi. Mr. Doctor. You know, you know, people call me doctor also. Well, you know why? Because you create an impact. That's what doctors are meant for. I think if there was an accolade bigger than a doctor, you should be called. Because to say that you're very proud of you, but I do meant to also use. You know, that's one of my passion, to create impact. I have a foundation and mainly investing 1% of my, my, my revenue into youth development. So I want to say something to the global youth. Just tell them about the future of, of Nigeria and the whole world. Well, I've always said that the greatest asset of Nigeria today yeah. is its youth. Yeah. They're very energetic and very talented. All they need is a critical government support to be able to live in an environment to develop their talents, apply their energy and everything. And that is why for me, governance should be focused on them. Great. That is the people we are going to use because they have the productive age. So when we talk about production to consumption, this is the age of production. And they have what it takes to do it. And I wish you all the best. And I assure you, my commitment, and I'm sure of a lot of people, including a friend, Mr. Kaf, Mr. Kaf, Mr. Kaf. Mr. Kaf. Mr. Kaf. I'm sure with yeah. Mr. Mustafa, yeah. is to create that environment yeah. for that participation. Thank you very much. This is what I tell you about, about Africa. There's a lot of hope. We haven't lost hope. There are opportunities. Forget about the challenges. Here I am as a Gambian. I'm jumping into Nigeria. Me, I'm not jumping outside. I'm coming here from to Nigeria. to Nigeria. So please, all those of you who are trying to lose hope, please don't lose hope. There are great opportunities. Leadership must be changed. As long as we have good leadership, we will get there. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat. One last word. Pleasure. Okay. Tap himself. <laughs> Doing the things we always said we should do. Making Africa work. Thank you.